Today on the Free Pilot Training Channel, we're going to be diving into the details on VFR sectionals. Specifically today, we're going to be talking all about airports. First, let's take a look at the basic airport symbol, which is a magenta circle. These symbols let us know that in these locations we have other than hard surface runways, in other words, grass or dirt. These could also mean that there is a hard surface runway here, but it's less than 1,500 feet long. Now as you can see here, a lot of these magenta circles have letters or symbols inside of them. Here are a few examples of what you might find inside of these circles. Now while an empty circle indicates that this airfield is for public use, this H here lets us know that this airfield is specifically for helicopters. Circles with an F inside like this one tell us that this airfield is specifically for an ultralight flight park. Now, when you see this magenta circle with a U inside, this means that the airfield is unverified. This might mean that there's a lack of information on that runway, or there might be some weird operating limitations that apply here. Circles with an R inside are probably the most common symbols. These indicate restricted airports. Usually, these are private airfields, and you need permission prior to using these, unless, of course, you're an emergency aircraft. Speaking of emergencies, if you ever see this magenta circle with an X inside, this indicates an abandoned airport. Typically, these are only charted if they're at least 3,000 feet long, and that makes these great places to make an emergency landing. Now, on rare occasion, you might see the symbol with the word objectionable beside it. The FAA believes that there's something unsafe or hazardous about this airfield. A lot of times, it's some kind of obstacle that makes this airfield hazardous, but you never know what's lurking at the end of the runway. The next type of airport symbol you might run across is one like this. If you look closely, you'll see a small depiction of the runway surrounded by a solid magenta circle. When we see this symbol, we know that this airfield has a hard surface runway from 1,500 feet to 8,069 foot long. I'm sorry that they chose such a random number for the upper limit of these runways. Comment below if you know the reason why they did this. Now, notice some of these airports have little tick marks surrounding the airport symbol. These mean that the airport is supposed to have fuel services, but if you're going on a long trip, I recommend calling first because sometimes these smaller airfields can run out of fuel. Now, if you'll look closer, you'll notice that this airport has a star on top of it. This indicates that this airport has a rotating beacon, and rotating beacons are important for a couple reasons. First, they make it easier to find the airport at night. They also help you identify that you're at the correct type of airport. For example, take a look at this beacon on the top of this control tower. At normal civilian airfields, these beacons alternate between green and white, similar to the way this beacon is flashing now. Military airfields, on the other hand, flash with one green and two quick white flashes. Green, white, white. Green, white, white. Now, if you ever see a beacon flashing white, yellow, green, that would indicate a heliport. And obviously, that's for helicopters, so you wouldn't want to try to land there. And last but not least, alternating white and yellow lights indicate a water airport for seaplanes. Now, while there's no requirement for them to do it, some airports operate their beacon when the weather is below VFR minimums. And when they do this, they typically use the general VFR weather minimums of 1,000 foot ceilings and 3 statute miles visibility. Before we continue with the lesson, did you know that the free pilot training channel has its own merchandise store? You can buy hoodies t-shirts, and all kinds of different cool merchandise to show your friends that you're getting the best free pilot training available. If you don't mind supporting this channel and looking cool at the same time, be sure to check out that link in the description below. Now, if you look back at our VFR sectional, you'll notice that some of these airports are blue. This lets us know that this airfield has a control tower. That means anytime you see a magenta airfield, these are untowered. Now, take a look at this bigger airport in this Class C airspace. Just like the smaller airport we just mentioned, this one's blue so we know it has a control tower. If you'll notice, this airport is no longer surrounded by a circle, but now the runways are outlined with dark markings. When we see this, we know that this airport has at least one hard surface runway greater than 8,069 feet long. Now take this with a grain of salt because if there are multiple runways, they can be less than 8,069 feet. Now check this out. This airport also has a beacon. But on these larger airfields, they try to match it to the location on the airfield. Speaking of that, take a look at this little dot on this airfield. When you see these, these depict a VOR, a VOR DME, or a VORTAC in its approximate location on the field. We'll talk more about those in a future lesson. Now I want to draw your attention to this little anchor. This tells us that there's a seaplane base here. This particular example is an untowered seaplane base, but check out this one. 
Not only does it have a control tower, but it also has fuel services. Now, let's break down the airport information label. On the first line, we see the airport's name along with its location identifier. On the second line, notice the letter CT here followed by a frequency. This lets us know that this airfield has a control tower, which we already knew because the runways are blue, and this is the frequency that it uses. Now check out this little star. This means that the tower only operates part-time. If you wanted to see the hours that it operated, you would have to look in the chart supplement. This C stands for CTAF. When the tower is not operational, this frequency reverts to the common traffic advisory frequency. Now notice the frequency where we can get our weather. In this case, we have ATIS. But different airfields have different weather reporting services. That's a lesson for another day. Next, we have our field elevation in feet above mean sea level. And here at this airport, the elevation is 55 MSL. Now this L next to it lets us know that we have lighting in operation from sunset to sunrise. And that little asterisk next to it indicates that some lighting limitations exist. We'd have to look in the chart supplement to see exactly what those were. Further to the right, this number tells us the length of our longest runway in hundreds of feet. In other words, the longest runway on this airfield is 11,000 feet long. Now, as I'm sure you're already aware, in the standard traffic pattern, you make left-hand turns. But some airports want you to make right patterns on some of the runways for one reason or another. These are indicated right here by an RP followed by which runways are right patterns. Now, this AOE you see here is not a normal informational note. But it stands for Airport of Entry, and this is a place where you can get customs and border services. Anytime you run across weird information like this on your VFR sectional, be sure you pull out your aeronautical chart user's guide. You can download this document for free from the FAA's website, and this is the best tool available for deciphering VFR sectionals. I hope you enjoyed today's video on VFR sectionals. If you did, would you consider subscribing? And be sure to check out these videos if you want to get yourself one step closer to that private pilot certificate. Yeah,